In this class, I am going to show how to determine copolymer sequences in assignments from carbon, a carbon-13 NMR spectrum. For this, we are going to take as an example the ethylene-propylene copolymer. This copolymer has been much studied and the tables with the assignments already exist in the literature. However, it is good to see how these sequences were assigned and it can serve as an example of how to proceed in case of a new copolymer determination. The ethylene propylene copolymer has the monomeric units ethylene and propylene as shown here that we are going to name by the letters E and P. The copolymer has six possible triad sequences that are the following. EEE formed by three ethylene units, the asymmetric triad EEP and PEE, PEP triad, all of them centered in ethylene. Then there exists the triad centered in propylene, PPP formed by three propylene E units, the asymmetric triad PPE and EPP, and the triad EPE, all shown here. To determine the chemical shift of the carbon of each triad, we can use the constant calculated by Liederman and Adams, as shown in this table, as we have seen in part fifth of this course. Remember that this table, it can be used only for alkanes. Let's start by the EEE triad. The carbon atoms that represent each triad are the central ones. That means from the central unit. So we are going to calculate the chemical shift of the two carbons from the central unit, here in red. The underlying carbon in the central sequence is the secondary carbon S delta delta because the next tertiary atoms in both sides are in position delta or higher from this carbon atom. Just to remember, in NMR, each atom fills its environment till four chemical bonds of distance. That means the position delta. The chemical shift of this carbon is calculated by the following equation where the constants are the corresponding to a secondary carbon, B2, in the table. Then it is taking into account the two secondary alpha carbons bonded to it. The beta carbon are already included in those constants. Then the constants for the two gamma and two delta carbons are added, resulting a chemical shift of 2996 ppm for this carbon. The other carbon of the central unit, also in red, has the same environment, resulting in the same chemical shift. It can be seen that on the left of the EEE triad, it was added another ethylene unit in blue, forming in this case a tetrad. In the case that we have a propylene unit instead of an ethylene unit, the underlying carbon, it is not anymore the S delta delta carbon, but the secondary gamma delta carbon. In this case, the chemical shift of this carbon changes because it has three delta carbon atoms in its environment, resulting in a chemical shift of 30.21 ppm. The second carbon of the central ethylene unit is still S delta delta with the chemical shift of 2996 ppm. We can notice that on the right of the triad, 
it is indifferent if we have an ethylene or a propylene. To view the nomenclature and use of the Liederman and Adams table, please go to part fifth of this course. Let's see now the triad EEP. The first carbon of the central unit that it is underlined in the following structure has the resolution of tetrad in the, on the left. That means that its chemical shift is different if the first unit by the triad is ethylene or propylene. Thus, if this unit is ethylene, we have the tetrad EEEP, and the carbon is called S gamma delta. In another nomenclature, this carbon is called gamma delta B1. The chemical shift is calculated using the constant for a secondary carbon that has two secondary carbon in alpha, two carbon in gamma, and three carbon delta, resulting in a chemical shift of 30.21 ppm. If the unit on the left in blue is a propylene, we have the tetrad PEEP, -E and the first carbon of the central unit is called S gamma gamma. In this case, we have four delta carbons, and the chemical shift is 30.46 ppm. The second carbon in the triad EEP -E central unit has the resolution of triad because no matter which are the unit by the triad, on the left or on the right, the chemical shift of this carbon is the same, 27, 27 ppm. By its position in the molecule, this carbon is named S beta delta, and it has two secondary alpha carbons, three gamma carbons, and two delta carbons in the neighborhood. Let's see now the triad PEE. -E. The first carbon of the central unit of triad PEE -E, has also the resolution of tetrad. This carbon is named S alpha delta, and if the first unit on the left of the triad is ethylene, the tetrad is EPEE. -E. The chemical shift of the S alpha delta carbon is calculated using the secondary carbon atoms constants. This carbon has tertiary and secondary carbon in alpha, two gamma carbons and two delta carbons being the chemical shift 36.91 ppm. In the case that there is a propylene on the left, the tetrad is PPEE, -E, and the first carbon of the central unit is also S alpha delta, but the chemical shift is different because this carbon has one more delta carbon, resulting in a chemical shift of 37.16 ppm. The second carbon of the PEE triad, the carbon S beta delta, has only the resolution of triad, and has the same chemical shift of the S beta delta carbon of the EEP triad, that is 27.27 ppm, as it can be seen in the figure. Other triad centered in the ethylene unit is the triad PEP. -E this triad has the first carbon with tetrad resolution and the second one with triad resolution. The first carbon underlined here is the secondary carbon S alpha gamma. In the tetrad EPEP, -E this carbon has one secondary and one tertiary carbon in alpha, two gamma carbons and three delta carbons. The chemical shift calculated by this equation is 37.16 ppm. If the tetrad is PPEP, -E the carbon S alpha gamma has an additional gamma carbon in its neighborhood having a chemical shift of 37.41 ppm. If we take into account the units adjacent to the triad, this carbon can also be named S gamma alpha gamma delta, 
and the previous one is delta alpha gamma delta. The second carbon of the PEP triad, named S beta beta, it is not sensible to the triad adjacent units. So it has only one chemical shift independent of the tetrad sequence. This chemical shift takes into account that it has four gamma carbon from it. So the calculate chemical shift is 2458 ppm. Now we are going to calculate the chemical shift for the triads centered in propylene. In this case, we have to calculate the chemical shift for three carbon atoms that represent the triad. Let's start with triad PPP. The methylene carbon of the central triad is called S from secondary, alpha alpha because it has two tertiary carbon in alpha. But if we take into account the following unit, it can be called S gamma alpha alpha delta, when it's fir the first unit by the triad on the left is an ethylene. If the unit on the left is propylene, it is S gamma alpha alpha gamma. To calculate the chemical sheet of this carbon for the first tetrad, we use the constant for a secondary carbon, 1534, and add to this the constant for two tertiary carbon alpha, that means two times 16.70, two gamma carbons, that is two times minus 2.69, and three times the constant for delta carbon, that is 0.25. The result is 44.11 ppm. The second tetrad has a delta carbon more giving a chemical shift of 44.36 ppm. The tertiary carbon of the PPP central unit is carbon T beta beta. This carbon has only the resolution of triad. To calculate the chemical shift is necessary to use the table for tertiary carbon. So to the constant 23 point 46 is added the constant for two secondary carbon in alpha and four times the constant for the carbon gamma. Being the calculated chemical shift for this carbon, 28.38 ppm. It can be noticed that in this table there is not constant for the, the carbons. For the primary atom P beta beta, it is used the table for the primary car atoms, being the constant 6.80, and it must be added the constant for a tertiary alpha carbon, that is 17.83, two gamma carbons, and four delta carbons, resulting in a calculated chemical shift of 20.61 ppm. Let's see now the triad PPE. The secondary carbon of this triad central unit has the resolution of tetrad. When there is an ethylene unit on the left, the secondary alpha-alpha carbon has two tertiary carbon in alpha, two gamma carbons and two delta carbons, resulting in a calculated chemical shift of 43.86 ppm. When there is a propylene unit on the left, it results in the tetrad PPPE. And in this case, the S alpha alpha carbon has one more delta carbon, having a chemical shift of 44.11 ppm. The central unit of the PPE triad has a tertiary and a primary atoms with their nomenclature T beta delta and P beta delta respectively, as it was shown in the fifth part of this course. They can also be called Br B1 and 1B1 respectively. For the tertiary carbon, 
we, are, we use the constant in the table shown here. So to the constant 23.46, we add the constant for two alpha carbons and three gamma carbons, resulting in a chemical shift of 30.45 ppm. For the primary atom, we use the constant 6.80, to which it is added the constant for one alpha carbon, two gamma, and three delta carbons, giving a calculated chemical shift of 20.12 ppm. Let's see now the other asymmetric triad, EPP. The secondary carbon of triad EPP has also the resolution of tetrad, so it is different from EEPP or PEPP. For the first tetrad, the carbon is a S alpha delta, and it has a secondary and a tertiary carbon in alpha, two carbons in gamma and three carbons in delta, being the calculate chemical shift of 37.16 ppm. For tetrad PEPP, this carbon is S alpha gamma, and it has one more delta carbon than tetrad EEPP. This results in a chemical shift for this carbon of 37.41 ppm. The tertiary carbon of triad EPP is named T beta delta or BRB1. And to the constant for tertiary carbons, 2346, is necessary to add the constant for two alpha secondary carbons and for three gamma carbons. The primary carbon, P beta delta or 1B1, is bonded to one tertiary carbon. That means that it has a tertiary carbon in alpha. It also has two gamma carbons and three delta carbons having a chemical shift of 20.12 ppm. Finally, we have the last triad centered in P, the triad EPE. The methylene of this triad has also resolution of tetrad, so we are going to have different chemical shifts for this carbon in tetrad EEPE and PEPE. The secondary carbon in tetrad EEPE is S alpha delta or alpha delta B1, and it has in alpha, one secondary and one tertiary carbon, two carbons in gamma and two in delta, having a chemical shift of 36.91 ppm. The methylene of tetrad PEPE is a S alpha gamma or alpha gamma B1 carbon and has one more delta carbon than the previous tetrad. So its calculated chemical shift is 37.16 ppm. The methane carbon of triad EPE is carbon T delta delta or BRB1 and has two secondary alpha carbons and two gamma carbons, resulting in a chemical shift of 32.52 ppm. The methyl carbon of this triad is the carbon P delta delta or the carbon 1B1. And it has one tertiary alpha carbon, two gamma, and two delta carbon, having a calculated chemical shift of 19.63 ppm. Now that we have calculated all the chemical shifts of the carbon atoms represented all the triads, we are in condition to make a table. In this table, we have in the first column the calculate chemical shift in ppm. In the second, the triad that have carbons at those chemical shifts. And in the third, the carbon atoms related to those chemical shifts. Those carbons are represented by two different nomenclatures. Here we have an example of ethylene propylene spectrum with the experimental chemical shift. Analyzing the spectrum in detail, we can see that the region of the methyl carbon between 19 till 22 
ppm has more peaks than expected by our calculations. This is due to the presence of tacticity in the sequences containing more than one propylene, that is, in sequences PPP and PPE plus EPP. As the propylene unit has an asymmetric carbon atom, the methane, it generates different stereosomers as we have already discussed in part 4 of this course. Just to remember, here we have the methyl region of an isotactic polypropylene, as you can see in more details in part 4 of this course. When you have two consecutive asymmetric units as the propylene, there are two possibilities. Or to have a diad meso, or M, where the asymmetric carbon have the same configuration, or a racemic diad R, where the asymmetric carbon have the opposite configuration. This results in three possible triads, MM, MR, or RR, that appears in this order in the spectrum. There is also the possibility to distinguish pentads and higher sequences, as we can see in this figure. Returning to our ethylene propylene carbon 13 NMR spectrum, here we have the expanded methyl region. We can easily divide the spectrum in three areas, the um, MM, MR, and RR, in accordance with the tacticity previous assignments. In a copolymer, this region is still more complicated because, in addition to the methyl resonance due to the PPP triads, we have the resonance of the methyl from EPP plus PPE triads and the EPE triad. The peak of the EPP and PPE triads appear between the peaks of the PPP triads with MR plus RM tacticity and the EPE among the syndiotactic PPP sequences. The intensity of the peaks also help to see the position of the experimental chemical shift. We can now start to complete the table of the chemical shift. In the second column, we add the experimental chemical shift, and in the fourth column, the methyl carbon triads with their respective tacticities. Here we have the complete table. Using NMR equipment of higher resolution, it was possible to assign higher sequences. As it can be seen in peak 7, the triad PEP has various lines due to the higher sequences and tacticity. The same it can be noticed with peak 8 from EEP plus PEE sequences. In general, the calculate chemical shifts are good approximations of the experimental ones. In the first column of this table, we added a number from each peak. Here we can see the spectrum with all the peaks identified by a number from 1 to 18, corresponding to the table assignment. We are going to use this number for the quantitative analysis. Once the table is ready, we have to relate the integral of, of the peaks with the triads to obtain the quantitative analysis. So, looking at the table, we can find first the isolate triads. Triad PPP can be represented by peak 9 that has been assigned to one carbon of this triad, that is carbon T beta beta or Br B1. So we can write PPP equal to K multiplied by I9, where K is the normalization constant and I the integral of this peak. Other isolate triad is EPE at 33.11 ppm relative to carbon T delta delta O BRB1, represented by the integral of peak 14. So we can write EPE equal K multiplied by I14. EPP plus PPE 
can be represented by carbon T beta delta or BRB1 at 30.68 ppm. In this case, we have two triads and two carbon, and we can write EPP plus PPE equal K multiplied by I12. Triads EEP plus PEE can be represented by peak 8 between 27.18 and 27.43 ppm due to the carbons S, beta, delta, or beta, delta, B1. So EEP plus PEE is equal to the normalization constant multiplied by the integral of peak 8. PEP is isolated in peak 7 between 24.35 and 24.85 ppm, corresponding to carbon S beta beta or beta beta B1. So PEP is equal to the normalization constant multiplied by the integral of peak 7. Finally, triad EEE has two carbon S delta delta or delta delta B1 in peak 10 at 30 ppm. EEE is equal to K integral of peak 10 divided by 2. The division by 2 is because we have one triad represented by two carbons and we have to see how much it is one carbon of the triad. Once we have the equation relating the triad with integrals, we can calculate the amount of triad of this spectrum. We can see the integral of the peak below each signal. In the case that we do not have the integral directly, as in the case of the integral of peak 12, we span the region so we can calculate the peak as it can be seen in the expanded spectrum. In the first column of the table shown here, we have the triads in the second, the corresponding integrals. In the third, we have the molar fraction, and in the fourth column, the percentages. If we add the percentage of the triad centered in propylene, we can have the amount of propylene in the copolymer, that is, 36.6%. And if we add the triad centered in ethylene, we have the amount of ethylene in the copolymer. In this case, 63.4%. If we want to compare the results with the ones obtained with the equations obtained by Randall that we have seen in part 6 of this course, we have to divide the spectrum in regions from A to H, as shown in the figure. Here we can see the integrals corresponding to each region of the spectrum. We apply the equations and we obtain the molar fraction and percentage of each triad. As we can see, the values are quite close to the ones calculated by the other method. Once that we have calculated the amount of all the triads, we can calculate the number average sequence length and also the reactivity ratios. Here we have the corresponding equations that we have already seen in part 6. So we make the substitution in the equation by the value of each calculate triad and we obtain the following result. This copolymer has about 3 ethylene units between propylene units and an average of around 2 units of propylene between ethylene sequences. For the reactivity radius, it is necessary to know how many monomers have been introduced in the feed. As an example, if we put an equimolar amount of ethylene and propylene in the reactor, say 0.5 mole of each one, the ratio between ethylene and propylene is 1, so x is 1. We, we use the diad calculated from the triad, and we obtain the reactivity radio for ethylene of 1.9 and for propylene of 0.9. That means that the ethylene is more reactive than propylene and that the homopolymerization of ethylene is favored over the copolymerization reaction. 
On the other hand, the copolymerization of propylene is favored over its homopolymerization. Thank you.